So hey, Linda, it's Daoud. Let's, um, let's go ahead and show you how to create a variable product. Um, again, um, the differences between a variable product and a simple product I'll show you in just a second. So you're already familiar with the WordPress interface. So let's just go down to products and open up your list of products. And the, the difference here between a variable product and a simple product, as I explained in that email, a simple product is when you have a product and a price and there's absolutely no variations or options on the pro on the uh, on the the product or on the you know what what you have for sale. So an example that might be, you know, a widget. You know, there's a widget, one color, one size. It's the it comes the way it is. That's a simple product. A variable product is when you get into you know the sizes of shoes or the sizes of t-shirts or different colors that things can come in. Um, that's where you can create a variable product. So let's go ahead and take a look at what how to set this up. So we're going to go in here to um, just the first option that I saw here for um, your ballet flat. And what I noticed was that all of your ballet flats have become simple products. I have no idea how that happened, um, but that's what's keeping the size from showing up. Uh, again, you know, I haven't been through your site in a long, long time, so um, last I knew everything worked fine. I won't worry about how this happened. So what you do is you start with creating a variable product. So Again, we have product data. You see, let me just show you, make sure you know where this is. So here's your title. Here's the box that we don't use for editing. As a matter of fact, I'm going to drag that up a little bit. And then you come down to product data. And in this drop down, there's a few options, but we're only focused on either simple product or variable product. So let's select variable product. And then we want to update. Okay. Once we've updated, we have some more options here down the left hand side. And the first thing we need to do is we need to go and select what the variables are. So let's go to attributes and on this attributes area um, there's this little pull down menu and you see I've already created attributes for size. This was something I put in when I first built your site. So you don't have to enter each of the sizes on each of the products each time. It's already set for you. So let's click size and then add. And then so size and we're gonna call out those attributes. We could type them in one at a time or we could just select all and they all show up. We're going to make sure we click used, used for variations, which means that in a second, we're going to set the price and the variation of each of these sizes. Um, right now we're setting the attributes of what the sizes mean, and then we're going to make the variation again for, the, for the sizes against the product. So, um, so we've, we've select all, created our variation, used for variations, and we simply save attributes. And once that's done, update one more time. And come down here, make sure our attributes, you see our attribute for size is there. We come down to variations. And now what we want to do is we want to link all variations, which means we're going to link each of those attributes to the product. In this case, it's for size. If any of these pop-up windows come up, just select OK. And now this is where we see our size. We have 44, 43.5, 43, 42.5, 42 all the way down. And what you do is you put in your price. Now again, you can use SKUs if you want and sale prices and limits and all these other things, but the most important thing is the variable price. And I don't remember the price of your flats, so I actually can't enter anything. Um, <laughs> I apologize for that. But you would put in here one, you know, let's say it's 120. And you would put that in for every single product. Okay, every single, every single variation. And I'm going to do this for two of them and then save it, oops, just so you can see this is how we get the product in place. So you would go down, oops, there we go. So you would go down and just keep going down the way here. Enter all for all the sizes, all the size attributes. And once you're done, select update. And now if we go view the product, which I'm going to do here, you'll see that whatever size attributes I put in place will show up. So that's how we get the drop down back into place. So if we select 44, now that's where we get our add to cart option. It's that simple. So you do this on every one of your products. You, um, you create a, uh, you know, you create a variable um, product. 
and then create the attributes and then connect the variations for each attribute to the product itself, just like I showed you. So I'll go through this one more time. Um, first, I'm going to remove the prices. Now, remove, by the way, removes the attribute. So to edit any of this, you'll notice when you mouse over these little boxes, which stand for each of your, each of your variations, there'll be this little arrow. Click that little arrow, and that's how you find your attributes again. So I'm going to delete the price. Excuse me, and I'm going to go ahead and update this one. Now, this won't show a drop down on the product because I haven't given it any prices, but I'm going to leave this here this way so that it's already set and you can just put the price in. I'm going to go do your next flat that's in order just so I can walk you through this one more time and then hopefully this will all be clear. So we find your ballet flat. I'm going to do um, this one. So the essential ballet flat strapless silver. So you open it up. You change it to a simple, to a variable product. You select update. <clears throat> Next, you come to attributes, and you already have these size attributes in place. That's interesting. Hmm. I'm gonna guess. Well, doesn't matter anyway. Go to variations. You already have your variations. So this is where you would go and change your prices. Now let's see what happens if we update this. Let's see if the product changes. So let's view the product. Yeah, so there we go. So again, somehow just all your products got changed to simple. I have, again, I have no idea why. Maybe you were changing the price. Would be my guess. I, I don't. I don't really know. Because um, I saw that when I came here, this was a simple product and the price was in place. Um, but you know, hopefully now I've gone through two of these. Um, and I, now I've really shown you the two options that you're going to run into with putting your, your, uh, your prices and your sizes in place. So just go ahead and review this. Um, it should be pretty clear and pretty easy. And um, I'm going to change this one back to simple for now because it looked like the price was different from the price that you had. Uh, though I don't remember what you had here, honestly. So I'm just going to update this. And then you can go through and turn each of these into variable products. So anywhere that you've had a ballet flat, you want to change to a variable product. You want to make sure the size attribute shows up. And that's it. It's, it's pretty simple. And, um, you know, I'll leave this video be posted for ever. So you don't have to worry about it too much. So hope this is helpful. And um, glad to see that you're getting sales.